So, you came for some fur, eh? I posted this render a little bit ago, and a lot of you really liked it and wanted to know how I made the fur here. So, here it is. The fur video. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to add some quick fur to your FNAF models, and how to set up the materials to give it that cuddly and fluffy look. But first, I wanted to inform you guys about a Discord server named Circus Babies Carnival. It's a really nice place where you get to connect with fellow FNAF fans, talk about your theories, share your artwork, and so much more. You can even gain some pretty cool VIP awards like FNAF models if you boost the server. So, if any of that sounds intriguing to you, then consider joining in. Links in the description. Alright, now let's make some fur. Before that though, we need to grab a model. Head on over to Google, Twitter, or DeviantArt and look up some FNAF retextures for Blender. Scroll down until you find one you like, then find the Google Drive link. Once you're there, select the three dots next to the file and select the download button. Then, save it to your drive or whatever folder you please. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, why retextures to the regular models? Well, retextured FNAF models tend to look more realistic and make the fur more believable, in comparison to Scott's style of models, which looks kinda cartoonish. If we added this to an accurate model, trust me, it's going to look ugly. I've acknowledged that retouches are actually really hard to find, unfortunately, so I'll try linking some in the description to simplify the process. Next, to import our model. Open up Blender and go to the top left corner of your screen. Select File, Append, then find where you saved your model. Once you see it, double click it and you should see a list of files. Select the collection folder, find your character's name, and then import. If you couldn't find the collection folder, then just go to the objects folder instead and press A to select everything, then regularly import from there. One thing to note though is that when you import models like this, you might have extra objects like lights and cameras in your scene. If that happens, you can just delete them. Now with our model imported, it's time to set up the fur. Select the part of the model you'd like to add fur to. I'll start simple with the arm. Then go over to the particles tab and hit the plus button. Then switch from emitter to hair and it should look like a sea urchin. Set the hair length to something relatively low, adjust the hair amount, but nothing too big. Then scroll down to the children settings and set it to interpolated. This is where all the fur comes in. Set the amount to something like 100 and higher if necessary. However, maybe keep the distance amount at 10 unless you really need to see how much fur you're actually getting. Render amount is the amount that will show in the final render, and display amount is the amount that you want to be in the viewport. Now, I'm only setting this to 100 now just so I can tamper with the amount of hairs and actually see what I'm doing. If you have a weak computer, this probably isn't a good idea. Actually, scratch that, I think for a period isn't a good idea. Something I recommend is going into your render properties and changing your curve settings from strand to strip. Strand shows these thick sticks that you can actually see how much fur you're really getting. However, when you set it to strand, you can get more accurate results and see how thick your fur actually is. Now for where the magic comes in. Scroll down to the roughness setting and play around with the random setting. By doing this, we're getting those random short curls that everyone uses in their animations. We have to play around with the hair length of it if it gets too long. Scroll down to your hair shape settings and change the thickness of the hair if it looks a bit too thick. Also, make sure you change your hair steps in both viewport and render if you don't want it to look so, well, low poly if you will. To my knowledge, this is how you can get some basic fur, but you can get even more advanced with it. You can go for some more longer and thicker hairs if you do the same process but with longer hairs and more particles. Then go from object mode to particle edit to do things like comb, smooth, add, grow, and add some fluff to your hair. Something to note though is that Blender locks your particle settings once you start playing with the particle editor. Make sure that your settings are final. Even if it's locked, most of the things from it you can use in the particle editor anyway. Well, the difference is, you have more control over what you do. Looks kinda goofy here, but if you experiment with the settings more, you can get some really nice results. You can add an extra particle system too, but make it shorter, looser, and more wild to give it more realistic results. This looks like hey, but you get the point. Something I wanted to point out is that there's a more simpler and lighter approach to make fur with geometry nodes where Blender already has all this stuff pre-built for you, but they already made a video on it themselves, so just to sweep that under the rug. Ah! If you want to add fur to a specific area like the belly or the snout, select the part that you want and hit tab to go from object mode to edit mode. Then change the face select and press C to change your mouse to this circle, then you can just highlight the entire belly. Or you can select the middle and press Ctrl and plus rapidly to start selecting the areas around it, then remove any excess parts if needed. You can press Ctrl and minus if you wanted to retract or do the opposite. Or if you're lucky enough, you can press Ctrl L to select the areas by seam or sharp edges and they'll automatically count those parts. You can press Shift Ctrl L if you want to select several of these parts. Then go to the data tab and make a new vertex group. Make sure to name it something you'll remember. Then go back to our viewport and press Ctrl I to invert the selection or select it by seam again. Make another vertex group and name it something else. Then once you're done making the fur, scroll down to the vertex group settings and add your vertex group into the density setting. 
Make another hair group and repeat the same process, but change the vertex group to the one you made for the rest of the torso. And finally, the materials. If we were to leave things the way they were, it would look obviously very mid. So what we gotta do is we gotta make a completely different material for the fur. Make sure to drag a new window and change it to the shader editor. Then go ahead and make a new material. You can name it if you like. Then go to your particle settings and go to the render menu. Change the material from your model's base material to the one you made for the fur. Here I'm adding an HDRI while using the Cycles render engine so I can see our fur better. You'd probably like to sit on your own, but here I was just lazy and wanted instant results. <laughs> Going back to our fur material, change the principal BSDF to the principal hair BSDF to get a more fluffy material. We got the basic look down, but the colors are obviously inaccurate compared to our base material. So to fix this, add an image texture node and select the drop down menu. Try and find your base model's texture and select it. Then plug it into the color. This is where the retexture part I mentioned has more of a role, because this determines how everything is going to look. Depending on your model, you might have to make multiple hair materials if they all use different image textures. If you have a retexture where everything is basically merged into one like the Help Wanted models, the process is so much easier. If you want, you can maybe play around with the human brightness if it's all too striking to you. Now from here, you can edit things like the first roughness, the radial roughness, and all the other settings. Maybe increase your display particles to get a better look at your fur. And with that, you should be done for the most part. After setting up some quick scenes and setting up some nice lighting, you should be able to start pumping out some pretty good renders. Oh, you're not sure how to go about lighting. No problem. If you want to learn a little bit more about lighting, you can learn the basics about it with this video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.